So chapter six talks about why you should develop a minimum viable product instead of fully developing a product and creating all kinds of features that you think your final product might have. And that is because the assumptions that you started off with when embarking on the startup idea might not actually be correct. They're assumptions. They're guesses, best guesses you have about the customers for your product and whether the product is actually solving a problem that people care about. They're best guesses that you have based on the current knowledge that you have of the market and your potential users. So why a minimum viable product? Why should you build a minimal version of your product, maybe around at 40, 50% completion, just nothing near what you envision your product to be, but at least be a small part of what you think your product might become. Now, the reason for that is because that is how you quickly test your assumptions. The best thing to do when building an MVP is to list out all your assumptions. List out every single assumption you have about your customers, about the product, about your product idea, about your market, and then to come up with quick ways to test out every single one of these assumptions. You don't exactly have to build something right off the bat using an engineer, using code. In fact, you can just do something manually like what, for instance, the founders of Groupon did. What they did to test if there was demand for discounted, heavily discounted items was they literally cobbled together a website. They had these coupons, which they would then send out to people who would pay for them through Apple Mail. They would literally just send out PDFs. Now, based on an example from my own, one of my own projects, what I did was I took a script from Google, this pre-written script that would allow me to automate emails, and I tried to test the assumption of what if I could automate networking for college students? What if, what if I could create an easy way for people to reach out to people automatically and that all they would have to do is respond to first messages? What if I did that administratively and manually as part of a service for college students? And what I've so far been doing is I've been collecting together contacts lists manually and then sending these emails using the script that I found on Google. That required no code whatsoever except a few amendments to the script, which literally, literally took 10 minutes. The point is you can test the assumptions that you have about your customer, about your users, about your market, simply by coming up with manual ways. Like you, you don't have to build a product out right off the bat. In fact, you can run a series of tests. You can test each individual assumption and then based on the empirical data that you get, based on the reactions of the people that you're testing your, your minimum viable product with, you can get that data and then go in, a, go in the same direction, try to fully flesh out a product after getting validated learning. In fact, good signs from the people you're testing your product with. Based on the positive reactions you're getting from people who have used your MVP, maybe that might be the sign you need to move in the direction that you think you're gonna go in. You don't have to build something right off the bat. You can just run tests. You can just manually provide whatever service that you think you're going to provide with your product. And then to see if that attracts attention. If you get an overwhelming amount of attention, which probably isn't going to happen right off the bat, then you know at least you're on to something that at least there are people who are demanding what you offer. In fact, you don't even have to offer the service itself. You can just create a landing page and then see how many people actually visit your landing page. There are just so many ways to do things that don't really scale in the long run, which is something that Y Combinator recommends. Don't do something that scales at the start. Do things that don't scale, provide concierge services, provide like service that's very customer centric, customer specific. See if you can make one user happy before you make the next user happy. All you really need is 100 happy users to really get a product going. Make sure that you're doing that right off the bat so you start off on a strong note. So you start off on assumptions that have been validated through MVP tests, through users who have given you positive reactions to whatever you're trying to build. 
That's what chapter six is about. It's all about testing out the assumptions you made about your users, about your product, about your market, and then running the lowest cost tests possible to check if your assumptions are correct. And there are so many companies out there that have done this successfully, like Airbnb, for instance, they literally just had air mattresses in their apartment and they hosted this very bare bones website to get their first three customers literally into their apartment to sleep on their air beds. Dropbox did this by creating a video of their service and then just including these internet references and memes to try to attract the attention of people to sign up for their service over traditional file synchronization and file sharing services. So there are just so many ways, so many tests you can run to confirm that what you're on to is actually something that people want. You don't have to go into this year long product development cycle where you develop every single feature out there. Just try to make sure that whatever you're developing, that minimum viable product works and then go from there. Keep going in the direction of whatever works and move away from what doesn't work. And you can't really do that when you're just developing a whole product from scratch. You should do things iteratively. That's why iteration is so important. Do things one step at a time and only move on to the next step if the previous step, the previous aspect of your minimum viable product worked out, works out, well worked out with your customers. If it didn't, if it doesn't, think about why. Think about why that didn't work and what flaws were in the in the assumptions you made about your users, about your market, about your product. That's what chapter six is about. It's about why you should be building a minimum viable product and how you should go about doing it. You don't have to always build something right off the bat. You can manually provide, you can replicate whatever effect you're trying to create with a product by literally just manually doing things like what I'm doing, literally finding manually cobbling up together contact lists to send to college students to see if they actually might find some benefit out of having a repository of people to reach out to on a regular basis to help with their job search. So that's all for my summary of chapter six of The Lean Startup, and I will see you for chapter seven's summary.